I absolutely love both of these posters. What's going on, you guys? It's your boy Avery here, bringing you guys a bit of a different intro to today's deck profile. Now, I wanted to give you guys a quick bit of context for this deck profile. Obviously, we are waiting for the January 2022 ban list to come out so that we can have a better idea of how to build our decks. But regardless, I wanted to show you guys what Flunderies is looking like right now for me personally, going into a Sword Soul format, most likely, depending on what gets hit on the ban list, as well as the branded archetype with the Albaz structure deck coming out. So guys, be sure that you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and Let's go ahead and dive on into the office so that we can go on over this deck. I'm sure it's very weird seeing me go from one quality of a camera to another quality. Don't worry, that's going to be getting changed soon. I'm hoping to get a 4K webcam very, very soon. Uh, it's just a matter of being able to find it and at a somewhat good affordable price. But without any further ado, let's just go ahead and dive on into this Flunderies deck profile. There have been a couple of changes that have been made since the uh, last build that I want to go over in this version of the deck and uh, kind of talk about my thoughts on it as well as with the new Journey Preparations Quick Play spell coming out. So let's just dive right on into it. Starting off, you are playing three copies of your first Stratos. Uh, it's the heart and soul of the deck. You have to play Robina. Uh, if you're not playing three, I really don't know what you're doing. This card is so good, and it gets your full-length combo going. We are also playing three copies of Flunderies Eaglin. Just a really good card. Uh, again, another Stratos, getting your high levels. I was playing three tributes. We are now playing four. Um, that really doesn't ever change. I've seen some people play five tributes. Um, but I, I just don't like that ratio. I think four tributes is a good way to go. We are also playing two copies of Stitch, one copy of Toucan, and then we're still playing three copies of Dimensional Shifter with the one Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds. All pretty standard stuff. Um, you can opt to play, you know, two Toucan if you want. Um, I feel that it's fine as is. And then for our high-level tributes, we are playing two copies of Empen, one copy of Ryza, and one copy of Apex Avion rounding off your tributes and your monster lineup. We are also playing three copies of the expensive Pot of Prosperity. And uh, what can I say? It's it's Pot of Prosperity. You know, you can play Extravs. Um, you can play Dualities. I mean, we're playing three Prosperity along with, well, I might as well grab them, three Pot of Duality. And, you know, it's, it's expensive. I get it. Um, there's not really anything I can say about it other than, like, you know, there are other decks in the format that you can play. Or if you have access to Extravs, definitely play Extravs. Um, th that, that's really the only substitute I can give at this point. Some people were saying you can play Wing Requital, but Wing Requital is just sort of a win more card because if you have two Wing Beasts established, you're already probably going full combo anyway. Um, so at that point, if you're drawing two, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, so you've got to play duality. If you can afford extravs, then go with extravs. If you can't afford the prosperities, if you can afford prosperities, definitely go with pot of prosperity. We are also playing three copies of Book of Moon. I in testing, I have been thinking about cutting these for the journey preparations because it is pretty much better than Book of Moon. However, Book of Moon can also be used. Um, not just defensively, but offensively, because you can flip, you know, an opponent's Mogi face down, and then they have to have the extender in the form of Long One. You know, they summon Ecclesia, send it off for the Mogi. Okay, cool, book the Mogi. You've got the token. If you don't have Long One, or you don't have a way to get to it, then you're, you're kind of in a rough spot. So I've been testing around with that. Um, I'm thinking about cutting Dimensional Fisher, um, and then two other cards, not sure what yet, to play the three journey preparation along with the three book of moon. Um, but that that's still in testing. As of right now, I've been taking out the book of moon for journey preparations. But let me know what you think in the comments about that. And then for a little bit of techiness and cancerness, we are playing two copies of Mystic Mine. So this is where a lot of the testing has been coming in because the issue is with Flunderies is that you want to go first, right? There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Um, the issue is that Mystic Mine is a very going second card. Um, along with some other going second cards that we're playing, three copies of something that you'll see in a minute, it kind of makes the deck feel more like it should go second, whereas at the same time you end up with a lot of hands where you want to go first. Then if you open up cards like Mystic Mine or anything else going second, then you have those cards to fall back on. Um, so I've tested with it both going second and going first. Seems to be more consistent going first. 
Um, but I'm still debating on whether or not I want to have these in the main deck. Because if I am going to do that, I'm just going to solely go for going second and throw in like Lightning Storms, Dark Ruler No Mores, things like that, just to break the opponent's board. Um, but this is obviously good going second because you can just play it, stop the opponent's hand trap, stop all their monsters, and then you can summon Robina, Eaglin, you know, pop off. As long as the opponent doesn't end on like you know, less than two monsters, then you're good to go, um, because you're always going to have less monsters than them, and then you're going to end on Impin and the statue, and then you can just, if you have Magnificent Map, you can play the Magnificent Map over the Mystic Mine, and then it just turns off for you, and then the Mystic Mine was only on for the opponent, which is uh, really, really cheeky. We are still playing one copy of Unknown Wind. Um, it's, it's a really good card. Uh, so I've seen some people play more than one. I've even seen some people where I play D Fisher, people will take out D Fisher and play two copies of Unexplored Win. I feel it's a bit of a dead draw at that point. I feel that one's fine. Um, but, you know, there's always room to improve. We're playing three copies of Magnificent Map, one copy of Call by the Grave, and one copy of D Fisher, along with one copy of Gold Sark, and one copy of Terraforming. Um, like I said with D Fisher, uh, I am debating on whether or not I want to take this out. You know, there are games, times rather, where I've opened up Dimensional Shifter. And I'll just ditch it, and then I'll also have the D-Fisher, and I'll just set the D-Fisher as a bluff. Uh, or I'll play it anyway, just to really solidify that my opponent's cards are going to be banished. Um, but usually I just set it as a bluff, so that's why I've been taking it out for a copy of Journey Preparations and Testing. For the Traps, we're playing three copies of Evenly Match. Again, it's really good going second, and then we're also playing one copy of the City of Dreams. This is where I don't know if the deck just needs to be going second or going first base, because Evenly Match is really good going second. Obviously sucks going first. Um... So that's where I feel I need to maybe throw in more cards going second. Um, but in testing, I mean, it's it's done fantastic. You go second, you have the evenly matched the Mystic Mind. You can bait them out with either evenly or mine, and then play the other card. It's it's just such a good blowout card, and then you're just able to end on Empin and the Statue. And I mean, the opponent has no resources at that point. They are going to lose. Uh, for the side deck, because the extra deck, quite honestly, is meaningless, um, it is 12 cards. The other three could honestly be anything you want. Lancias, Drolls, um, uh, not really Crossouts, because that's not really good in this deck. Anti-Spells, I mean, it, it can really be any cards you want. Um, but right now, I am playing two Sphere Mode, because everybody at my locals likes to end on more than two monsters when they're playing Sword Soul, so I like to punish them for it. Um, we're also playing two Lightning Storm. This got moved up from one because I bought a King's Court box and pulled a second Lightning Storm, which was amazing. So we are now playing two in our side deck, and we will be playing two in our side deck once Journey Preparation comes out. And then we are playing three Dark Ruler No More, three Cosmic Cyclone, because back row decks really hurt this deck, one Imperial Order, and then one Harpy's Feather Duster just for more back row hate. The other three cards could be three Twin Twister, they could be three Kaijus, they could be they could be really anything. They could be absolutely anything. And then the extra deck is just literally 15 cards and Dogmatica Maximus targets. Um, that's really all there is to this deck. So you guys, for the most basic combo going into the January 2022 format, it's still going to be your Robina combo. You know, you start off with your five card hand. If you have Robina, you're most likely going to be winning the game on top of anything else that you have to stop the opponent. Hand traps, D shifter once you start off, uh, call by the grave to stop any hand traps the opponent has if you don't have the D shifter. Things like that really help the deck go a long way. So this is the most basic combo, no hand traps that you have to worry about. You're going to start off by summoning the Flunderese Robina. And if you don't already have the Flunderese Eaglin in your hand, then you are going to search your Flunderese Eaglin, uh, or just any low level that you don't already have in your hand, or you'll search the statue if you don't already have the uh, statue in your hand. Uh, when that resolves, you are going to normal summon your Eaglin and activate its effect. To search yourself Flunderese Empen, you are then going to tribute both of your Flunderese monsters. In order to play out Flunderese Empen, Empen is going to activate on Chainlink 1, and you're going to chain your Flunderese Eaglin on Chainlink 2, thus causing a chain block so that the opponent can't ash you. Uh, so then the Eaglin is going to get added back to your hand, and then the Empen is going to search you, more than likely what it's going to search you, the majority of the time, is going to be your Flunderese and City of Dream. So that's going to be in your hand. And then if you already have the statue in your hand, 
then you can just summon the statue. And if you already had Eaglin in your hand, you could just use the Robina to add the statue and then almost summon it on resolution. You're going to set the City of Dreams and then you're going to end your turn. And then you're going to be able to play on the opponent's turn with the City of Dreams. Okay, guys, and combo number two is going to be... Uh, really, almost any fun reason. This can be Robina or Eaglin. Uh, depending on the board state, it could be Stitch or Toucan, but we're just going to focus on the most basic things. Um, so this is going to be Robina with a Magnificent Map. And so you're going to activate your Magnificent Map and trigger its effect uh, to reveal uh, the Robina. And then you're going to use that effect in order to banish your Flunderies Eaglin. Uh, you're then going to normal summon the Robina off of the map's effect. Robina is going to activate as chain link 1. Eaglin is going to be chain link 2. So that, again, you can chain block. Add this to your hand. And then the Robina is going to get you a search. Uh, now that you have the Eaglin in your hand, you can just simply add the statue to your hand. That's going to come in handy later, obviously, near the end of the combo. And then we're going to normal summon our Eaglin and activate our effect. Again, since we're going first, you're going to want to add Flundery's M pin from your deck to your hand. Uh, you will then be able to normal summon again. And you are going to summon out your Flunderies Empen. Empen is going to chain, activate on chain link 1, and you're going to trigger the Flunderies that has not triggered this turn yet, which is going to be Flunderies Robina. And the Empen is going to be able to, once again, search your Flunderies in the City of Dreams if you did not already open with it. If you did open with it, you can get Unexplored Wind. Uh, you can get Scary Sea if you play the Counter Trap and get another map. Whatever you need. And then for your additional normal summon, uh, you are going to once again summon Barrier Statue of the Storm Winds. And then you can, of course, set the City of Dreams face down. This is really good because even if the opponent Veilers your Robina, let's say, if you have another extender in your hand, uh, which you're going to because you banished the Eaglin, you'll be able to add the Eaglin and then use your normal summon that you normally have once a turn to still continue on with your combo. So this two-card combo allows you to play through at least one hand trap along with chain blocking and things like that. All right, you guys, and that is the Flunderies deck profile. Be sure that you hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed, and hopefully we'll be able to do plenty more in the future once we get a better webcam. Hopefully the balance is right around the corner. Please, Konami, just give it to us. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.